Do we have to do a switch? Am I good? Are we good? No, thank you. I appreciate your help. Thank you. We left off here in our last slide, and we just saw a compilation, a very powerful one that coincides with Matthew chapter 24, Mark chapter 13, and Luke chapter 21. And we asked at the end, are you ready? Are you ready? So you also, when you see these things taking place, again, the compilation was just a very small, minute idea as to what is literally happening in these last days. And Jesus says, so you also, when you see all of these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation, the generation that sees all these things that we just saw, the generation that's seeing the distress of nations with perplexity, the, the false Christ, people calling themselves Jesus, not just a false prophet, which it, it includes it, but calling themselves God. When you see earthquakes and all that we just saw, all that we just read, all that's happening. He said, this generation that sees all these things will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So again, the question is, are you ready? Are we ready? So I have a couple questions for you all. And you answer this on your own. But I'm going to tell you something. It will be answered throughout these conferences. Number one, are you ready to be a witness under trial? Are you ready to be a witness under trial? I want to ask that you maybe take the time to write it down because I think it needs some, um, we really have to think about this and go before the Lord, just within ourselves unto the Father. Number one, are you ready to be a witness under trial? Number two, are you ready to have your faith put to the test? Because whether you are ready or not, here it comes. Number three, are you ready to endure tribulation and come out victorious? Number four, are you ready to be strong in times of persecution? Number five, are you ready to not compromise your faith in Christ? Number six, are you ready with spiritual reserves? And I want those of you who are tuning in to please write this down. Number seven, are you prepared? Are you ready to prepare yourself in Christ? In other words, when there is no one that can lay hands on you, pray over you, there's no longer a toll-free number to call in or a prayer request online, are you ready to prepare yourself in Christ? And number eight, last but certainly not least, are you ready to not love your life to the death? I'll give a moment. These questions are good questions, godly questions, questions that we need to be able to answer by the Holy Spirit, questions that each and every believer should answer. This conference was available to all who came, and only a limited came. There are other conferences, Christian conferences, that are charging $500 a ticket to get in, and that's no exaggeration. And they're packed. They're not ready. But we will ready. Excuse me? They don't sell the truth. But we will be ready, because during those times, God is going to use us to minister a word. In this multi-city tour, each, each of these questions will be answered and you will be prepared. I say this strongly by the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Amen. Proverbs, uh, you know, please go with me. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 27. I want us to read this together here. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 27. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 through 27 states, Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses at the openings of the gates in the city. She speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded. Because you disdain all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes, when your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind. I'm going to continue on a little bit more. Then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would have none of my counsel. They despised my every rebuke. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies for the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Amen. Amen. Wisdom is crying out to us. Wisdom is calling us to hear the Lord and to prepare for the times upon us. The Lord states in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32 through 33, but whoever listens to me, we just read it, whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Now, again, we just saw a very minute compilation of the current state of the world's affairs, and we can probably all agree that it looks pretty insecure. It's scary and even evil. But according to the Lord, we can dwell safely even in these insecure times. We can be secure even in a world of great insecurity, and we can fear no evil because God is with us according to Psalm chapter 23. Please tell me you all know Psalm chapter 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. My friends, you're going to need to know your, your word. Because during the times of persecution, during the times when, again, I have to say, nobody wants to hear this, we got to say it, during the times when the economy collapses, during the times we're talking about EMP, we're going to be in the dark. we got to, we got to minister to our children. It's all right. You're a light in the darkness. The Lord says, even my darkness shall be light around me. That's what David said. That's powerful. And we got to be able to minister this word to others. we got to, we got to know our word. Ah, oh, yes, baby. Oh, God bless that baby child. I love you already, precious. Mm -hmm.